In this problem, the percentage yield is the response variable and is the result of a chemical reaction tested with three different catalysts, C4, C5, C6, on four different days, D1, D2, D3 and D4. With three catalysts and four days, there are 12 different possible measurement conditions. And here we have one measurement for each of those 12 conditions. So we have no replicate measurements in this data. To analyze for the effect of both catalyst and day on percentage yield, we go to the general linear model, which we find through ANOVAR, general linear model, fit general linear model. When we fit a general linear model for the first time in a session, all of these options under here will be faded out. So we have to go through the process of fitting the general linear model before we can select any other um, options like comparisons or factorial plots. So we now fit the model and the response in this case is the yield and the factors are the day and the catalyst. The order in which we select these can affect the way in which the data is displayed at the later stage. And it may be necessary for a different graph to come back and change the order of selection. So now we click on model and we see that the factor terms that have been selected for our model are day and catalyst. So we will just accept those, okay, and run the analysis. The results appear in the session window and we see that we have the standard analysis of variance table. Both the day and the catalyst are identified as being significant. The day with a p-value of 0 0.009 and catalyst with a p-value of 0 0.028. We could now choose to see if there is an interaction between these two terms. And we return to the general linear model. And we now want to put an interaction in our possible model. So we will click model. So again, we see the factors in our model and we wish to add an interaction term. So we will highlight both terms. And this allows us to identify any cross factors or interactions. And we will press add. And we will now see that the interaction term day times catalyst has been added to the model. So we will click OK and run the analysis. If we look at the analysis of variance table, we can see that it has measured sums of squares, but it has been unable to calculate any significance values because it requires replicate measurements to be able to separate the variations due to the uncertainty with the error and the uncertainties within the interaction term. However, we can return to the menu and now that we have fitted the general linear model, we can actually look at a factor plot. And so we have day and catalyst selected. And we wish to select an interaction graph. So we will go to graph. And we'll only look for the interaction plot. And click OK. OK. So this gives us the interaction plot, which confirms that there is an effect due to the day in which case we see that the yield appears to decrease from day to day. We also see that there is a difference between uh, the catalysts in that the catalyst C5 does appear to be different from catalysts C4 and C6, which confirms the results that we had in the table. We can demonstrate the calculation of a true interaction term by using this new data set, which again shows the yield of a chemical reaction, but this time just using two different catalysts, C6 and C7, at three different temperatures, T1, T2 and T3. With the two catalysts and three temperature, we have six possible measurement conditions, but with the 12 measurements, we can see, for example, that rows 1 and 2 are measurements both made with catalyst C6 and at temperature T1. So they are replicate measurements made under the same experimental conditions. So we have two replicates for every 
one of six different measurement conditions. And to perform the ANOVA analysis, we go to STAT, ANOVA, General Linear Model, and we need to fit the General Linear Model. The response is the yield, and the factors are the temperature and the catalyst. We need to go to Model, and we wish to analyse the interaction term, so we highlight these two terms in the model and add a cross factor or the interaction term which appears as temp times catalyst and we can run OK and we run OK. If we look at the analysis of variance output table we can see we have the temperature, the catalyst and temperature times catalyst. Looking at the p-values we can see that the temperature is indeed significant with a p-value of 0.026 and on the face of it the catalyst with a p-value of 0.343 does not appear to be significant but if we look at the interaction term the temperature times the catalyst this is indeed significant with a p-value of 0.030 so we can say straight away that the temperature is significant the interaction is significant and we would also say that the catalyst is significant by virtue of its involvement in the interaction term. We can now also look at an interaction plot by going back to STAT, ANOVAR, General Linear Model, and we now see that we have the option of doing the factorial plot. We have the temperature and the catalyst selected. We will go to Graphs and we will just be selecting the interaction plot. OK, OK. And here we can see the yield for the three different temperatures and at each data point is the average of the two replicate measurements for that particular condition. And we can see that catalyst C7 does appear to have an increased yield moving from temperatures T1, T2 to T3. Three. whereas catalyst C6 does not appear to be temperature dependent. So this demonstrates the interaction of the two in that catalyst C7 does seem to be dependent on temperature and the effect of catalyst C6 appears to be independent of temperature.